colonization in Africa has not ceased. Instead, it has evolved into a more covert form of control that persists through manipulation, exploitation, and interference. While Africa may appear independent on the surface, the reality is starkly different, with the continent still being subjected to unacceptable levels of political intrusion, surveillance, and exploitation. These actions, carried out through subtle soft power tactics from afar, continue to undermine true sovereignty and self-governance in African nations. France, often seen as a former colonial power that has disengaged from its former territories, remains deeply entangled in African affairs. Despite the illusion of withdrawal, France's influence endures through indirect means, now exerted not through overt leadership but via support for insurgent groups. This clandestine approach perpetuates control and instability, challenging the narrative of liberation from colonial forces. The legacy of colonization persists through neocolonial strategies that manipulate policies, economies, and social structures, perpetuating dependency and hindering authentic self-determination. Former empires, while no longer flying their flags over African nations, continue to exert influence through diplomacy, foreign aid, and military cooperation, ushering in a new era of imperialism where chains of control are invisible yet profoundly real. In Niger, the recent departure of French troops and the ambassador, superficially signaling a shift in power dynamics, masks a more intricate reality. France's retreat is not a relinquishment of power but a tactical maneuver, transitioning from overt military presence to covert forms of influence. The withdrawal is a calculated move to maintain control while appearing to respect Niger's sovereignty, safeguarding economic interests, particularly in the uranium sector, and influencing political landscapes through intelligence networks and economic ties. France's repositioning of intelligence operatives to neighboring countries underscores a strategic continuation of influence, ensuring a grip on Niger's affairs without overt military presence. The economic levers controlling Niger's wealth remain in French hands, intricately woven into the nation's economy, while diplomatic channels and intelligence operations shape political narratives and governance decisions, maintaining French interests behind the scenes. The establishment of the African Command by France, touted as a collaborative security initiative with African nations, masks a deeper agenda of preserving colonial influence under the guise of cooperation. This rebranding of military presence aims to deflect from France's history of imposing control through force, presenting a facade of mutual benefit while prioritizing strategic dominance and resource access. As France maneuvers to secure its position in Africa through subtle means of control, the narrative of African sovereignty and autonomy remains contested. The need to confront and resist these enduring neocolonial dynamics is paramount, requiring a collective effort to dismantle structures of exploitation and manipulation, paving the way for genuine self-governance and emancipation from external interference. Securing a strategic foothold in Africa remains a paramount objective for France, with the African Command playing a pivotal role in reshaping the deployment of French troops across the continent. Rather than a retreat, the realignment of forces signifies a consolidation of military might in key locations, such as the establishment of senior command posts in Djibouti, Segal, and Libreville, Gabon. This strategic maneuver underscores France's unwavering commitment to maintaining influence in Africa by focusing resources where they can exert maximum impact. Niger, with its abundant uranium reserves and strategic significance, continues to be a focal point for the African command. Despite the reduction in troop numbers, French military influence endures through collaborative exercises, training programs, and the provision of military equipment. While these operations may not always be apparent to the public eye, France's presence in Niger is substantial and strategically orchestrated to ensure a strong foothold in the region. Beyond a mere show of military force, the African Command encompasses extensive intelligence gathering and surveillance capabilities. By establishing senior command centers in key locations, France can effectively monitor and control information flow across West Africa. This intelligence serves as a crucial tool for safeguarding French interests, enabling preemptive measures against any threats that may arise. Critics argue that the African Command is a modern iteration of France's neocolonial strategy, camouflaged under the guise of cooperation and partnership. 
Despite the rhetoric of collaboration, France's primary aim is to assert dominance in Francophone Africa, positioning itself as the primary influencer in the region. By leading military operations and security initiatives, France not only solidifies its role in African affairs but also asserts control over other Western powers with vested interests in the continent. However, France's methods extend beyond conventional military strategies, delving into more covert and shadowy practices. Reports have surfaced suggesting that France may be clandestinely arming insurgent groups in the Lake Chad Basin, including Boko Haram and the Islamic State's West Africa province. This alleged tactic, while shocking, serves a calculated purpose. By fostering instability in the region, France can justify its continued military interventions. The intricate web of arms supplies, routed through intermediaries and shadowy dealers, shields France's direct involvement, perpetuating a cycle of conflict that bolsters its position as a key player in the region's security landscape. This purported strategy not only perpetuates conflict but also engenders a reliance on French military aid among affected governments. By supplying arms to adversaries, France crafts a narrative that necessitates its ongoing presence for combating threats it indirectly fuels, perpetuating a cycle of dependency and conflict that serves to maintain its influence in the region. The situation at hand mirrors a familiar trope, that of the arsonist masquerading as the firefighter, a tactic synonymous with the historical maneuvers of imperial powers. Firstly, the turmoil deliberately fostered in the Lake Chad Basin enables France to exert pressure on neighboring actors, notably Nigeria. With Nigeria increasingly asserting its autonomy from Western influences, France aims to distract and limit Nigeria's ability to challenge French hegemony in West Africa by directing its focus towards internal security concerns. This alleged support for insurgent groups also functions to obstruct efforts by Niger and its neighbors to cultivate partnerships with non-Western forces like China or Russia. By perpetuating instability in the region, France dissuades global players from engaging with these countries, thereby fortifying its influence by default. Nevertheless, this stratagem is not without its perils. The deployment of proxy forces and arming non-state factions carries inherent risks of escalation, potentially leading to unintended consequences that could jeopardize France's vested interests. Furthermore, should these covert operations come to light, the repercussions could be severe, fracturing diplomatic ties with Western allies and tarnishing France's international standing. Despite these hazards, the allegations persist, with mounting albeit circumstantial evidence. The lingering query remains, to what lengths is France willing to go to uphold its sway in Niger and the neighboring territories? In 2024, global astonishment rippled following reports of a hostage crisis unfolding in Benin's W Park, a UNESCO-designated sanctuary renowned for its abundant biodiversity. The initial narrative painted a simplistic picture of Western vacationers abducted by militant groups, arousing media frenzy and portraying innocent civilians ensnared in Africa's perpetual conflicts. However, beneath this facade lies a potentially intricate and sinister reality. Speculations suggest that these purported hostages were not tourists but rather adept operatives proficient in explosives, guerrilla tactics, and jungle warfare. Allegedly orchestrated under French intelligence, these individuals formed part of a clandestine endeavor to train insurgent factions in the area. The ostensible hostage-taking, a staged facade, not only camouflaged this covert operation but also justified an expanded French military presence in Benin and its environs. If substantiated, this stratagem seamlessly integrates into a broader scheme of fabricating crises to validate intervention. By orchestrating a hostage scenario, France not only furnishes a pretext for military engagement but also perpetuates the narrative of African nations' purported inability to safeguard their security autonomously. This orchestration aligns with the white savior complex, wherein Western powers position themselves as indispensable guardians of a continent they continue to exploit. The underlying motive, as ever, centers on control. Through these orchestrated incidents, France can manipulate local perceptions and international discourse, asserting authority over information dissemination. The dramatic spectacle of a hostage rescue, replete with heroic accounts and cinematic visuals, 
bolsters France's portrayal as a benevolent force amidst regional turmoil, while simultaneously cautioning African leaders of their vulnerability sans French patronage. By monopolizing the discourse on security in West Africa, France effectively sidelines other Western powers, ensuring that its own interests supersede those of its allies. The global landscape is a tapestry woven with power struggles and narratives, where nations vie for control and influence. While the United States, the United Kingdom, and other Western powers have vested interests in various regions, it is France's adept manipulation of narratives that bestows upon it a significant advantage. In Africa, France not only maintains its influence but also asserts dominance over other Western powers with stakes in the region. This nuanced stance of power is not without its risks. The staging of hostage situations, if brought to light, could trigger a monumental public relations catastrophe. Such revelations could confirm deep-seated suspicions regarding Western motives in Africa, potentially sparking backlash both regionally and internationally. Furthermore, ethical dilemmas arise concerning the justification of endangering lives, even if those lives are complicit in a ruse aimed at geopolitical ends. The blurred line between reality and fabrication poses profound questions about the morality of such tactics and their implications. France's objectives are clear, retain control, preserve influence, and ensure unchallenged dominance in Africa. In the realm of high-stakes geopolitics, the ends often justify the means. Yet, how long can Niger and its neighbors tolerate this interference? What steps is Niger taking to resist France's encroachment and safeguard its sovereignty? Niger emerges not as a passive victim but as a proactive player in this narrative. Bolstered by a populace increasingly cognizant of neocolonial strategies, Niger's leadership actively resists France's control attempts through diplomatic maneuvers, security enhancements, and the cultivation of new alliances with non-Western powers like China and Russia. By diversifying partnerships, Niger seeks to reduce vulnerability and negotiate from a position of strength, challenging the Western-dominated global order. Internally, Niger strengthens its security apparatus to counter French intelligence operations and reclaim sovereignty. Efforts extend to economic diversification, media control, and fostering national unity to diminish external manipulation. The road to autonomy is fraught with challenges, given the entrenched legacy of French influence but Niger's unwavering determination signals a resolute pursuit of self-determination. The struggle between Niger and France epitomizes a broader shift across Africa, where nations assert independence and reject former colonial influences. The time beckons for Western nations to respect African sovereignty, acknowledging the end of an era marked by dependency and heralding a new chapter of self-reliance and independence. As Africa continues its ascent, the West faces a crucial choice, relinquish control or confront the repercussions of obstinate interference. The narrative is shifting, and Africa's future lies in the hands of its people, not the vestiges of colonial powers. The West must heed this call for autonomy or brace for a changing geopolitical landscape shaped by African agency. In contemplating the departure of the West from Africa, the path to a peaceful exit devoid of conflict hinges on mutual respect, dialogue, and a genuine commitment to honoring African sovereignty. The era of African dependency is waning, paving the way for a future where Africa dictates its own course, unshackled from past impositions. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.